<laughs> um, but we're going to walk through it. So prior to beginning this project, we are going to listen to a popular or timeless Nigerian song. Um, and that, that's what I want to use as my text um, for this unit. So I want students to spend this, the first half of class, I want them to write down, I didn't put it on here, but I want them to write down um, their thoughts to the song first, answering questions like, how is the song different than American pop songs? How is it the same? Can you see culture within the song? What do you notice that you um, maybe just find, uh, I guess, different or, or new or exciting? You know, what are what are you seeing in this song that you maybe haven't seen before? And then, if, what I also want to do with this is draw out their prior knowledge on Nigerian culture. Um, so when we come back as a whole class, having that class discussion about the song and just. Um, Asking those guiding questions, I'm hoping we'll, we'll pull out some of those students that maybe have a deeper understanding of Nigerian culture and just offer me a little bit of insight into who, who knows what and, who, and where my students are as a whole. Okay, and then the latter half of the class period, students are going to sign up for their specific topic, um, which I did bring. So we have, we post this up, and it's basically the tribes of Nigeria. Um, location, geography, weather, history, ethnic relations, food and economy, um, political life, marriage and family, the arts, that sort of thing. What's neat about having students choose their own topics is that they get really into it. I had two students who, um, in this class, who are major procrastinators. They they just they admit to it, they know it, and they actually finish their their Prezi um, like super early. <laughs> <laughs> they're like, we're done, and they were really excited about it, really proud of it, and they were just like, oh my gosh, Miss Eda, like, we're never finished early, this is amazing, and they, it's because they were really interested in it, and they had done the arts and the and culture, and they were really interested, and they loved it, it was a great presentation, um, and so it was great to have students kind of showcase not only, like, something that they can have fun with, but also just kind of get, get more engaged with the assignment. And then the latter half of the class period for the gateway activity is we're going to have students sign up for their specific topic, watch a short YouTube clip regarding how to evaluate the credibility of sources, and that will take us to the end of the period. Okay, let me see if I have anything I want to say. Uh, yeah, oh, during that time, I'll also make sure to answer any uh, student questions on the project, things like that. If they're freaking out about it, we offer them time. So they don't have to get together outside of class. They do it in pairs, by the way. We, um, they were in teams of two to do it. We have Chromebooks for them to utilize. So I don't know if this will but I want to, I want to play all of it. This is the song I chose to use, and I'm not going to play the students all, you know, nine minutes of it either. <laughs> um, but what I want to do besides asking them those open-ended questions and gathering that information um, and that prior knowledge and just kind of having them explore using their critical thinking a reader response, you know, how does this person relate to you? Um, but I also want to revisit the song. So at the end of the unit, I want to go back to the song and have them look through their paragraph and then re, or not rewrite, but add to the paragraph anything that they, um, that now has changed, that they have this great, vast information of Nigerian culture. How has their view of this song changed? Um, and just, is it a different meaning for you now? That sort of thing. Here's just a quick, I won't play all of this. Why this is important. 
important. You know, like, why does it matter if your sources are credible or not? Um, so that would be part of this. When Charlie Street came up to you and started speaking, you probably want to know more about him and what he's saying before you took him seriously. The same goes for websites. Our way of viewing the world is based on the information we encounter. We use that information to make lots of different kinds of decisions throughout our lifetimes. There's a lot of information online, and since anyone can post it, it's crucial to evaluate websites before you trust the information you find. Evaluating information is essential for your you with all of that, but we, we stop, we talk about it with students, we also give them a little, you know, funny anecdote. This is not an actual human talking, but, <laughs> um, forget if it's like Microsoft's Siri or something like that, but we, they like that, it's a little fun. Um, and then, just as kind of a little wrap-up, I brought, um, their presentation direction, so we cut this sheet in half, and it's just, um, they each have to choose an appropriate skin with their uh, in an overview of their title and their cultural focus, an introduction frame, you know, they have to have important information, they have to have pictures, those that don't have any photos, they just kind of, um, they don't get as high of a grade if they just have all text in their slides. So we, we specify that on here, they can include sound or video if possible. We want them to be as great, creative as they can. Um, so actually, I, I was kind of hoping that or wishing that I had recorded it, and we had two students get up, and it was, um, they just gave a magnificent pre presentation. They stood up there, they they didn't memorize the, the stuff, which we didn't expect them to. They had note cards, um, they provided just a ton of information. It was really neat to watch, and I had a hard time grading them, because um, this was, mine will have a rubric, as seen in my <laughs> unit outline and goals, but the, uh, the way my mentor no rubric and so it was a lot of like gut feeling and that that was really tough for me so I, I have to have rubrics for things in order to be kind of unbiased as, as we're going through because I thought they were all great and the nervous ones that didn't have photos I was like oh I, you're so nervous standing up there I just wanted to give them you know 95s or whatever um, so that was my one big thing I learned from this is I kind of wish I had maybe presented my mentor teacher with my own rubric Hey, can we use this um, so that our, our grading is a little unbiased there? Um, yeah, so I think that's everything that I have. Yes. Oh, it's hard to stand up there and talk for so long. <laughs> Any comments? She's got a couple minutes, two minutes. Thoughts? The research projects, and we had a rubric, and it was so helpful because I found that I was super generous when I was just watching them, yeah. and then I went back and went, oh, they didn't need that. And it was really helpful because we both, since two of us were grading it, we were pretty much spot on every time, and where we were off, we were able to kind of provide evidence. And did you collect any notes from them, or did you just grade based off of their they, initial presentation? We just graded based off their presentation. And then they, they did turn in those five sheets, but I think if I were to do this on my on my own, like as my own unit, kind of as I've been designing here, I would have had a rubric. I would have had. Um, we actually didn't have them do the song thing. That would have been one big thing I would have had them do. And I would have had them give me notes, give me something like I would have had a rationale. Why did you choose to do this on this slide? Why did you choose to to say these things? Why did you find this information important? I, I would have done that. Uh, I was going to say, I, I'm a fan of that video. I think, I think it's good. Even though it's super bland, and it's cool to kind of make fun of it, sort of. But I think, I think that was really, I think that's really important for kids to understand what a incredible source is. Yeah. Um, this is more a question, like, about your unit as a whole. Do you have any time carved out to talk about colonization or like the missionaries of the book? Um, or is it just Nigerian culture? Okay, so the topics are, um, it's kind of all over the place. So we have um, social stratification, political life, um, generals and statuses, religion, um, tradition, the future of Nigeria. A lot of these students chose to do current. And so as they were talking, 